Thanks to Brilliant for supporting this episode of SciShow. Go to brilliant.org slash scishow to check out their course on scientific thinking. As strange as it seems, animals fall from the sky sometimes. Even ones that don't belong there in the first place, from fish to spiders. These phenomena have been known for centuries, but in many cases we still don't know where the heck all these animals came from. But answering that question begs another one, because we don't always know what happens to them. I mean, yes, splat, but actually a lot more than just splat. In some cases, animals can actually benefit from their aerial adventures. While these animal rainstorms can in fact be deadly, sometimes animals are adapted to be rain. So let's look at five of the potential outcomes for animals that become rain, whether they mean to or not. We'll go ahead and get the splat out of the way first. It's often a bit murky exactly how fish and frogs end up on land and far from their home waters, but there have been enough instances of weird rains of aquatic creatures for a lot of of hypotheses to begin circulating around. Some have speculated they were lifted out of their ponds and streams by water spouts, or maybe that torrential rains flushed the animals from underground and they didn't actually fall from the sky at all. Regardless of how they got there, you can imagine that after being caught stranded on land, fish are not gonna fare too well. And even if they did happen to land in a new and ideal aquatic environment, they might have already been exposed to less than ideal conditions during their travel, like getting too cold or dry. But it's not just aquatic animals that rain down from the sky. There are accounts of huge numbers of birds that have dropped dramatically from above, already dead or injured from unfortunate events like extreme weather or forest fire smoke. But sometimes there's actually a strategy to their swift and dangerous descent to Earth. In early 2022, hundreds of yellow-headed blackbirds rained down on the city of Cuauhtémoc, Mexico. Video footage of the bizarre incident showed a massive and tight black cloud of birds rapidly dropped down to the street. While hundreds immediately flew back up towards the sky, many of them died when they collided with the road and surrounding infrastructure. This isn't the only case of flocks of birds seemingly dropping out of nowhere. It typically happens to birds who hang out in large flocks, like starlings. Many causes for these unfortunate events have been speculated, ranging from air pollution to 5G technology. Technology. Far more likely than that, however, is that this is the result of a calculated risk gone wrong, as the birds dove for cover from an aerial predator. There are a number of bird species that attempt to escape predation in a coordinated manner. They fly in a tight group, swiftly changing direction and altitude in what appears to be a single unit. This generally works quite well, since predators don't seem to like diving right into the cloud, and instead try to pick off birds that stray from the group. In a last-ditch effort, birds might dive very low towards the ground to avoid being caught. If the group takes a deep dive and is forced too low, say into a building or pavement, the coordinated maneuver becomes catastrophic. While this may result in a fatal collision, sometimes desperate times call for desperate measures. Now, speaking of collisions, one type of animal rain might just result in a very large reptile bonking you on the head. Thanks to its balmy climate and a fair bit of carelessness on our part, in the United States, Florida is home to many introduced species of the reptilian variety. Whether from accidental dental introductions by tropical cargo, or purposeful releases of exotic pets, some of the over 150 documented reptile introductions have reached invasive population levels, including one very large lizard. The native range of the green iguana includes Mexico, south to Paraguay and Brazil, but they've been kicking around Florida since at least the 1960s thanks to the pet trade. Now, much of central and southern Florida is warm enough year-round for these heat-loving lizards, and luckily for them, cold snaps are pretty rare. But when they do happen, they can put iguanas and innocent pedestrians at risk. If the temperature drops too low during a Florida winter, iguanas have been found to literally fall from the trees. Now, iguanas do sometimes purposefully drop from tree branches to avoid danger, but that's not what's happening in these cases. Iguanas are exothermic, meaning they rely on external temperature to maintain their body temperature. They're usually most active above 25 degrees Celsius, so lower temperatures can slow them down considerably. And during these cold snaps, temperatures dip as far as zero Celsius, a considerable drop. This can immobilize the iguanas to the point where they're just no longer able to hang on to their perch. And as you can imagine, getting struck from above by a stiff six-foot-long lizard 
it's not gonna feel very good. So in these cases, there have even been official falling iguana alerts issued to residents. Thankfully, as long as they weren't injured in the process, these grounded iguanas can wander their way back up into their trees once things warm up a little. And much like iguanas, certain ants make their homes in trees, including many species in Central and South America that spend their entire lives way up in the rainforest canopies. These arboreal ants are well adapted to life high up in the canopy, with special sticky feet that help them cling to their home tree at startling heights. Even so, they do occasionally lose their grip and take a tumble if they become dislodged or are startled. But even in these cases where it does start raining ants, you don't have to worry about them landing in your hair while you walk by some 30 meters below. That's because they're very good at gliding their way back to their home trunk. The dramatic descents of one species in particular, Cephalites atritus, has been quite well documented. In a study published in Nature in 2005, researchers used video recordings and field experiments to determine that these falling ants hit their home trunk target more than 80% of the time. Building on this, later studies manipulated the legs and abdomens of these ants to figure out how they were able to maneuver themselves home so accurately. They adjust their body's position while in rapid freefall, spinning around to align their abdomens towards their home trunk before gliding over to it, their rear end leading the way. While it does appear to be a whole body effort, their hind legs seem to play an especially key role in their ability to redirect themselves towards their home tree during these big falls. But it's not just this one species who can glide their way back to safety. This directed aerial descent has actually evolved numerous times within different ant subfamilies. And though they don't all glide in the exact same manner, this proves to be a vital adaptation to arboreal ants. If they weren't able to latch back onto their tree, they would fall the human equivalent of five kilometers from their home and into dangerous uncharted territory. And if falling ants make you squirm, you might not want to imagine numerous tiny spiders raining down after flying through the sky. But imagine a bunch of teeny tiny baby spiders climbing to a high point, letting out strands of silk, and floating off into the distance, sometimes hundreds of kilometers away. This ballooning behavior is found all over the world in different spider species, and it's often no short flight. Some spiderlings have been found as high as four kilometers up in the sky. And we've actually been pondering this behavior since the early 1800s. Even Charles Darwin puzzled over ballooning spiders that landed on the beagle while they were out in the ocean. Over the years, there have been two main hypotheses regarding airborne spiders. Some thought it was simply the wind carrying them to far off places, while others thought that it was electrostatic forces in the atmosphere. And while the wind would seem to be the obvious choice, it doesn't fully explain why spiders choose to balloon on calm days. Plus, the multiple silk strands released for their flight splay out like a fan and don't tangle in the wind as you might expect. A study published in Current Biology in 2018 finally tested the electrostatic theory for the first time. And they found that while these little spiders likely rely on a combination of the two factors, the electrostatic forces played a major role. To test this, they generated a controlled electric field in conditions without any moving air, and introduced some baby spiders. The spiders readied themselves and took off. Using the electric field, the researchers were even able to control the altitudes of the spiders once they were in the air. They also found that little hairs on their exoskeleton respond to changes in the electric field around them, likely signaling to them it's time to fly. Of course, these spiders aren't just flying for the fun of it. This ballooning behavior allows these wingless flyers to find new habitats, which would otherwise be too far to crawl to. That way, they can avoid overcrowding and food availability issues that might crop up if they all stayed in close proximity. So maybe not all reports of animal rains are legitimate. After all, we humans tend to tell tall tales. But in other cases, the observations are not only well documented, but are often happening for a very good reason. And while some cases of animal rain can be deadly for the poor fallen creatures, other times they not only survive their aerial drops, but might even benefit from it. Looking at strange things like animals falling from the sky and searching for explanations is just what scientists do. And if you're looking to train your brain in that kind of rational approach, you might like Brilliant's course on scientific thinking. There, you'll dispense with number crunching and mathematics in search of something more useful, physical insight. This is just one of their many courses recently upgraded to make it even more interactive than before. They're designed to engage your curiosity, not ask you to memorize stuff. And don't worry if you're busy. Their courses are split into bite-sized pieces so you can learn at your own pace. Brilliant has a ton of science, engineering, and computer science courses so you can always find something new to learn. To get started, head to brilliant.org scishow to save 20% on an annual premium subscription to Brilliant.